Hey, what's up? Hey, hey what's up? Live from the backyard and a barking dog. <laughs> get him, killer, get him. Hey, last okay, time we did him. this in my backyard, the dog barked too. It's part yes. of the deal. I mean, welcome to real life. That's yes. it. Three guys in a squeaky chair. <laughs> <laughs> that is gonna drive me <laughs> nuts. Yeah, look at a half an hour or so of that. Sorry, y'all. We can just push. Hey, episode forward. 44. We made it. Yeah, to 44. 44. That's crazy. I know I say that like with most yes, of these things, is. but. 44 episodes. This is. It thank you guys. For the 12 of you that watch and the. Anybody can do 44 episodes. The fact that 12 people still watch this nonsense. That, I think awesome. that's the. Like, <laughs> yep. <laughs> thank you. Uh, just think, man, a couple more weeks, we're going to be at 50. Yeah. Wow. We'll have a party. We will have all 12 of our viewers on the show. Yeah. At one time. That'd like be kind of cool. Like a super spreader party wow. here or something. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll stay spread out. But hey, so, so thank you once again for opening your house. We, yes. we appreciate it. We peaceful out here. May or may not throw Jeremy in the pool at some point, but we'll just, make sure, just make sure I get my phone out of my pocket before you do that. <laughs> we come here because it's quieter. So Amelia, dog barks. The pool thing's making all kinds of noise and my chair is squeaky, so sorry. That's yeah. alright. Next time we'll do it in the middle of 19. Hey, there you go. There you go. And now we got a wind chime. Wind chime. <laughs> anyway. So, um, so the, the whole purpose of this show, and I say this a lot, besides the, the important stuff that Jesus talked. Like that's the important stuff. That's why we do this. But besides that, real early on, it was kind of, we wanted to give our viewers, the 12 of you, the opportunity to kind of get to know us, so, right? get to know who we are. So today we're going to do a little Never Have I Ever. Oh, oh nice. boy. And I, I, I kept them, I think, all family friendly. There was there was a couple. I'm like, eh, I don't know. So <laughs> if there's one that, that is a little off color, I apologize. I took most of those you out. You never know what goes on with Dale. Yeah. Mind of Dale. Yeah. You can almost see it. That's, that's scary. That's a scary place, man. <laughs> I saw somebody today and they're like, wow, you actually do have hair. I said, yeah, it was an off day. I hadn't hadn't showered yet and I, I shaved my head. But anyway, all right. So, again, normally it's like stand up, but we stand up, that'd be kind of weird. And so, um, just we'll just see how this works out. So, never have I ever gotten a tattoo. What, well, do you raise your hand if you have or haven't? What's the if deal? you have not. You have not gotten a tattoo? <laughs> oh, sorry. <I'm> <laughs> yeah, he raised the arm never whistle. Never have I ever not, never have I never. I ever. know, I was trying to be silly with raising my hand. <laughs> the obvious. Like, none of us can answer. <laughs> I know. Never have I ever gotten a speeding ticket. We're, we're pretty lousy. Yeah. There were a lot of years ago, but still. Yeah. Well, yeah, it d doesn't qualify when or where or how fast or which states states um, <laughs> yeah, those are always a tough one you ever got an out-of-state speeding ticket no no yeah well <laughs> you got that one <laughs> yeah, twice. um Thanks. anyway that's another story for the day never have i ever lied to get out of going to work i never have called in sick to work so really you've never called in sick to no. work wow bionic man over here how have you never i'd rather be at work from sick Take the nice days for the days off, right? <laughs> Go on vacation. <laughs> Fair enough. Plus, there might be an attempt that some of my old bosses might be watching, so I want to make sure. We'll make point. Fire you we have 12 viewers, but later people do check this thing out at yeah. some point during the week. Never have I ever given a fake name. Well, actually, I, actually, I got to retract that. I did, because I had a job where I had to, because I was a medical debt collector. And we had to use a stage name. Oh, okay. That's, that's, well, it's still evil. You should not do that. <laughs> <laughs> it was Pat, my job. <laughs> Pat, this one is just for you. Oh. Uh-oh. Never have I ever used someone else's toothbrush. Oh, never. <laughs> have I ever. I haven't either. There may have been a mistake or something. I don't know. My wife's producing today. There may have been a mix-up at some point, but I certainly don't know about it. If, yeah, if you don't know, Pat has this thing about his teeth and uh, there's 99% chance there's always a toothbrush within like arm's reach of Pat. And there's 99% chance there's probably something wrong with me. <laughs> that's okay. I was a little higher than 99%, but anyway, <laughs> that's why we're doing this show. Yeah, there you go. Um, never have I ever been mugged. Hey! hey. <laughs> close. I was super close one time. Close doesn't count. I, I can't share that story names. either at this particular story. <laughs> <laughs> Never have I ever broken a bone. No, but I think this has been broken. I haven't. 
But I'm pretty sure this is what you call broke. But it didn't took like bleed or anything. Really? I don't know. Yeah, it's mostly cartilage up there. It's a weird story. The closest thing to a broken bone I had was a cracked in the tip of my finger, so that was about it for me. Yeah, starting now. <laughs> <laughs> Karate kid. Yeah. I have had several broken bones. Really? Um, yeah. What are you broke? Um, my the growth plate in my foot, um, the fourth and fifth metacarpal in my hand, which are these little bones right here. Oh. I got into a fist fight with a brick wall. Nice. Um, an ankle. Um, I think I have a broken arm. You got motocross or something here? <laughs> <laughs> no, I just don't. Yeah, he likes so, to fight walls, obviously. Yeah. Your brick just one way. No, no. Right. no. <laughs> don't explain a lot of the other things. It came that way. <laughs> I was, I was, that was the forceps that. Gotcha. Yeah, there you go. There's actually, again, squirrel, there's a, <laughs> I don't know if we have it, but somewhere there's my like first baby picture. I was actually a cone head. Oh, yeah. Because of the forceps. Yeah, my head was. That, that explains a lot. Yeah, I'm sure. it does. Yeah, um, some of the other breaks. All right, moving on. Never have I ever stolen anything. No hands or raised. I That's not definitely good. not. Never have I ever dined and dashed. Nope. I've never dined and dashed. Okay. I wasn't aware this guy. <laughs> Again, this is just. Apparently, you weren't either. We have <laughs> the same answers. Uh, th this. I had to think about this one when I was putting it on here, but. Never have I ever eaten leftover food from another table at a restaurant. Oh, oh that's grotesque. <laughs> <laughs> he just yeah, that's, freaks that's them out. <laughs> I'd almost rather share a toothbrush. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know, like, when you go out with a group of friends and there's, like, multiple tables, so is it really someone else's table if, like, you get, like, three or four tables with friends and then... You grab You're not your sitting pants. at that table, but on the way out, you... That's really? not like I took food off a stranger's table. I don't think, but again, it doesn't... Well, we all share sushi, right? We've got to eat sushi. We share same yeah, table, but... Yeah, but that's, but, you that's know, like, like... I don't know. Then again, back in high school, I was the human garbage disposal, so I probably was <laughs> hungry and said, oh, look at that. Somebody left me... I don't know. If anyway. Count, Ed. <laughs> <laughs> Never have I ever trespassed. I'm sure I'm sure at some point we used to actually like to walk in our neighborhood when we were like when my wife was pregnant we'd walk and so if they were ever like building a house I would have to go inside and look at the I was I was big in architecture and drafting when I, I was in school okay. so it's probably trespassing oh that's know, definitely like, trespassing yeah. oh yeah oh, <laughs> my, my friends and I there's, did there's that no too there's no problem <laughs> that's trespassing then I'm a common criminal in high school, so. <laughs> never have I ever spent more than two hundred dollars on a night out that's so easy to do. All right. Well, yeah. Never, never share my Armani story. I shared it at church. Uh oh. But so my wife gets this this gift card or gift certificate <laughs> to Armani Steakhouse. It's like on top of the Hilton or something in Tampa. I forget. What, anyway, so she gets this two hundred dollar gift card. Says you're gonna need to have at least a, another hundred dollars to go with it. And we're like, what? what kind of meal is that? So we get up there and we get up the top of the elevator. We had to dress up. So I had to wear a suit. She had to wear an evening okay. dress. As soon as the elevator opens, there's a guy playing the piano. We're like. Oh, we're in trouble. <laughs> we this water, sparkling water, and a guy holds it like it's a bottle of champagne, and he pours water into our glasses. We're like, wow, this is just the water? <laughs> yeah, we needed like an extra $150 just to eat dinner at this place. Wow. Because what do you tip on a $200 bill? Right, like right. $250 bill. Yeesh. Yes. Hmm. Never have I ever cheated on a test or exam. <laughs> Uh, only a couple more, I promise. Um, You're killing us. <laughs> well, on this one, I think we've I already on this test. <laughs> I think we've already kind of answered this one, but never have I ever broken the law. <clears throat> I think all the other ones. Never you know. have I ever gotten a tattoo that I regretted. I mean, they're all semi-regrettable at times. I don't regret any of my tattoos. I don't know my. Oh, so that's the answer if you don't regret. Yeah, if you don't regret any of your tattoos. Well, keep raising this hand. Yeah, oh, there you go. <laughs> What's your favorite tattoo? Can you pick a favorite? It's kind of like picking your favorite kid. Like, you kind of have one, but you can't really admit it. I got all three family members' names on me, so the three probably... Three and one. You have a favorite? I have to say, my Transformer one. Okay. That's a lot of tattoo talk on this show. Yeah, man. I don't know if I could pick a favorite. Like, like say your next one? <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> I think my, I was going to say my most recent one, the ladle, then I'm kind of partial to this one. But then I have the, the matching one with my wife, and then I have my, I don't know. I, they're all my favorite. Yep, oh, yeah, my anniversary. I mean, again. All right, 
Last one. Never have I ever lied at this game. So, <laughs> we're pretty honest about things here. Yeah. No, it's funny how my wife had to actually, my wife had to be the producer to remind you of your anniversary. <laughs> well, the crazy thing is, I don't, it's not actually my favorite tattoo. Because I, when I first got it, I got it small enough that I could hide it under my wedding band. Like, I never got it to replace my wedding band. And then I went and lost like 80 pounds, and my wedding ring didn't fit anymore. And I was like, oh, well, I'll just. But now because it's the writing is so small, it's hard to read. So like you have to really look at it to figure out, and it's starting to like mesh together. And yeah. so it's not my favorite tattoo uh, as Understood. a tattoo. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I just heard my wife going <clears throat> back. <there>. That was funny. <laughs> so that's it. That that was that was again. A lot of law breaking tattoo type <laughs> questions. Yeah. You might think we're part of a motorcycle gang or something if you're watching this. So stuff. cool. <laughs> not true. Dale looks like it. Jeremy maybe could pull it off. I'm definitely not. Every time I see that. a guy on a bike with a cut, I'm like, man, I want a, I want a bike. I want to be in a motorcycle. Does game. anybody? Do any of us know how to ride a motorcycle? Okay. Pull it off. He does. Of course, Dale's the one if that If you're the hero, it. you know how to ride motorcycles. They, uh, part so of the exactly. Deal. Well, I, I have, anyway, I don't, yeah. You've been a hero? No. <laughs> <laughs> so, it was fun Sunday. We, uh, you know, we talked, it was Palm Sunday, so we kind of talked about the crucifixion of Jesus, and the topic was basically to surrender like Jesus. And so, what does that look like? You guys don't know the question, but. Perhaps he does. My dog was barking, probably a turkey or maybe a leaf. A dog. lizard. Uh, never a lizard. What do you think it means to surrender like Jesus? I mean, I'm throwing this at you out of nowhere, but like, so if you were to, in your world, what is to surrender like Jesus? So, so Jesus surrendered to the cross even for us. What does that mean to you? Well, in your world, it's doing dishes. But... That's true. That's true. It's... Um, I can't say much. I do dishes at the end of my house, too. <laughs> yeah, I think I think it's going outside of myself for those that I love. You know, because because Jesus didn't want to go to the cross. I mean, who wants to go be brutally sure. tortured and beat up and murdered? And yeah, nobody okay, wants exactly. that. Um, but he was willing to do it. So so, what does that look like every day? Going out of my way to to do something for my wife and my kids that isn't really of myself. Yeah, yeah. great answer. Answer, especially when there's something that you wouldn't naturally normally do. Like I mentioned, dishes in my yeah. case, not something that I naturally love to do. But if it means serving yeah. my wife and my family, then yeah. laundry. Okay. Laundry. <laughs> Are you not answering this one? I, you know, it's That's hard to good. it's hard to top that answer or even try to have an answer with that one because that was so good. Um, but yeah, it's video. yeah, I, I'm gonna have to ditto that one because it was Dale's so good. A rock star. Dale did rock that one. Played one on TV. No. So this day, Jesus' surrender, uh, really to the Lord, but for us. Think about this. This was for us. It's basically a surrender to his own creation, if you will. But he goes through this day alone, y'all. I mean, only John is left at the cross with his mom a uh, couple days. But really, the, the guys he spent all the time with, the guys he poured into, have scattered. One of them, we know Judas has already betrayed him. Not only did he scatter, he betrayed him, yeah. sold him out. The other guys are gone. Peter has just denied him three times within eyesight. Yeah. One of the gospel accounts, I think Luke says that the Lord looked right at him as yeah. soon as the rooster crow knew. Yeah. So like, Can you imagine that feeling? Yeah, Peter feels like this big. Yeah. But so he's basically there alone. And so if you guys ever had to go through something tough in life alone, I will. I'll say that when early on in my marriage, when my wife and I separated. Mm for a little bit it was even though I had my family and stuff around I still felt alone and helpless and it was hard three guys in a Yorkie poem yeah <laughs> yeah that's yeah, a tough time it was yeah it was but you know came through it <laughs> yeah hey, you guys are doing pretty good oh yeah it, the thing that comes to mind for me is is all the time I spent in the hospital mm. um, again like my, my wife would come sometimes you know when she was able again most of that was when the kids were much younger, so we didn't have a babysitter. Um, and so there was days where she wasn't able to come visit me. You know, and people from church texting me or calling me and stop in, but for the most part, you know, when you spend two weeks in the hospital, you're there by yourself. Yeah. You know, the, the nurses come in, but they're they're doing a job that, you know, you're not going to, I mean, if you get frequent flyer miles like I did, you kind of get to know them, but it's not like... Dale Jordan checking in. Yeah, really. 
and, and so so you're kind of you're kind of there just dealing alone dealing with your own thoughts and, and a lot of quiet time a lot of prayer time a lot of stupid TV um, yeah that, that's rough you know one of the things that's really bugged me most about this pandemic is is not the fact that people get sick and even that people die because listen I don't know whether y'all know this or not but we're all going to die mm-hmm. I mean we, we get upset about this new thing but listen at the end of the day we're, we're all going to die what breaks my heart about this is when people have had to go to the hospital mm-hmm. and because of the pandemic rules and all these yeah. things you have to sit there alone oh. you know and one of my things you guys know this about me my mercy spirit I love to go visit people in the hospital like, not, not that I want them there but mm-hmm. like when people go to the hospital, I love to be there at their bedside. I love to go there and pray with them and just be with them and ask them jokes about the nurses and whatever. I like to lift their, that's part of who I am. And for me to not have been able to do that now in a year and a half, and specifically the people that have had to die alone yes. Yes, this last year is really super, yes. just the grieves my spirit. So yeah, I understand your hospital visits because mm-hmm. At the end of the day, the people that do visit you still have to go leave and go to their families or go to work or, you know, so you do probably do a big chunk of the day alone. Yeah, that's, I can't top that, but I will tell you, you mentioned some law-breaking type of things, and so early on when I was a young man, I drove with a suspended license, and I had to go spend 10 days in a county jail in Lake County, Florida, so all that against me was a long time ago. I don't drive with suspended licenses anymore. In fact, it's better just not to speed, as we mentioned yeah speeding tickets but anyway uh, that was alone you know that was tough and I just started this job that I liked and um, that I didn't tell them what was going on I just figured I was gonna go to court and pay a fine or something I mean it was a suspended license what's the big deal right yeah well you found out the big deal (laughs) it was a big deal to them so they immediately took me back and I just spent 10 days there it was just super boring and you're alone and you don't know anybody it was counties away and right right yeah so that was that was yeah it was less than fun to be quite honest with you but yeah, you learn to slow the car down during those days. <laughs> I did. I did 24 hours one tonight, so I can't imagine doing 10, 10 days. Yeah, or 20 days or years. I'd... It was way less than fun. No rights, no freedoms. You yeah. get told when you can go shower and all that stuff. It's like, oh, life out there is pretty good. I'll just slow the car down, stay yeah. out here, yeah. yeah, be in good shape. So. Yep. Yeah. yeah anyway. No more speeding tickets. You know, do you, I don't know if you guys are. are I know. I understand. A lot of people have a hard time watching like the Passion of the Christ and some of these movies that show what Jesus went through. Well, let me know your feeling on that real quick. Are you guys in that same boat? Is that a, do you have a hard time with that sort of thing because of the understanding of who Jesus is, or is that something that you need to watch to understand? I think it's something we do need to understand the full brutality of it. Like you know, Dale was saying before. I mean, it was just. I mean, Rome was the masters of it, like you said in your sermon, that they were, they knew how to torture people. Mm-hmm. And most people, normal people, wouldn't even live through the beating that Jesus took. Yeah, They different. wouldn't even made it to the cross. Yeah. So, it's, it just shows his strength to fight for us. And yeah. But it goes bigger than that. I mean, it, it's, the physical, I'm sure, was, you know, we talked about this Sunday, the physical was brutal. Like you said, a lot of guys don't even make it through the, the beating yeah. and all the things, but that to know that there's a separation from God coming. Yeah. You know, we don't know that. That's, that's not something we can put our minds around, but it's like air. So as you can look back, not a real windy day, but you can see the results of air as a wind mm-hmm. blows a tree yeah. and leaves move around. So you, you, you know there's air. You can't see it, but you know it's there yeah. because you can see the results of it. Yeah. Too often, we, we know there's results of God, but because we can't physically see him, we, have, you know, we forget or we get, you know, lose sight of the fact that God's always near. Yeah. But like air, if I were to take air all of a sudden out of this patio and somehow make a vacuum and we no longer had it, as we're suffocating to death, I guarantee you would think, oh, there was air. Yeah. We don't know what it would be like if God all of a sudden took his spirit from us. Yeah. I guarantee you we would know that there was a God. In fact, I believe that's probably what hell will look like. Is you know. yeah, fully aware that he's not there. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, like I can watch those kind of like gory movies, and you know, the, doesn't bother me. But you know, Passion of the Christ to watch that, and wow, <laughs> like he he endured that willingly. Holy cow! Man. Just to, and I'm sure the movie. The, the movie did a very good job. I'm sure the movie doesn't do it justice. Not full. Sure, no. I'm sure didn't do it justice. So, so just to watch that, 
yeah, I think, you know, you can understand, you know, you read it and you, you, you know, and you learn some history about how the Romans treated people and then they were the best at what they did. And, um, but then to see it even portrayed as well as it is in that movie, that brings it to a whole other level of, wow. Yeah. You know, I mentioned my little jail stint there, so I'll bring it up one more time, but you know, I remember at some point when I stood there, they gave me the sentence, meaning this is what you, this is what happens, this is what you get. Ten days, like that was it. They took me away, and I, I had no, I was at their mercy. I had no choice. There was not an option for me to back out of that. Jesus, at any given time during this entire day, even even hanging on the cross, could have just said any, said the word, and legions of angels would have come down and took him, you know, just protected him. And knowing that you, at any given time, could say, "I'm out." And yet he didn't yeah. for us. It's huge. When yeah. you watch these movies, when you see the best possible imitations of what it was like, and yet he never chose to, to back out. That's, yeah. that's crazy. It's big, yeah, right? Crazy. Yeah. I hope it changes the way you feel about how much you're loved by Almighty God. Mm -hmm. To know that Jesus at some point spends a time separated from the Father because of the sins we put yeah. you know, on his back. Yeah. Big stuff. So... Jesus mentions in Luke 9, 23 that we must take up our cross daily and follow him. Um, what do you? What does this mean to you after we... See, now we're lucky. We get to read the book of yeah. Luke and Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. and, and all the, We get to know the story. These guys didn't. And when Jesus makes this statement to his guys early in his career, they know what this means, kind of. Like, take up our cross... They know how this works. Mm -hmm. You carry your cross up to the hill. Mm -hmm. They crucify you and you die. And when he makes this comment, that probably startled them. But now we get to know the story. How do you feel about that That comment that daily we need to take up our cross? I think it means to like stand, uh, to me it's meaning like staying steadfast and focused on what we need to mm -hmm. to get through the day and overcome whatever obstacles the opposing force is putting in our path. Kind of like putting on your full armor. Every yes. Day, yeah. I, I think we're, we're never promised tomorrow. But we're never promised an easy life. It was. It was without the beating. It was hard to carry a cross. Yeah. Right. You know, best we can figure what the crosses looked like and what they were made of. And, um, so, you know. So my mind goes to anybody that, that's preaching the. Health, wealth, and prosperity. Oh, Christianity yeah. and, and everything's going to be perfect. Butterflies and rainbows and roses. You're reading a different Bible than I am. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's true. You know, it wasn't because for Jesus. Because, well, right, but to take up your cross daily means you're going to have trials and you're going to, you know, be punished in some ways. And it's life is not going to be easy. Yeah, there's going to be good days and bad days. And that there's, you know, but you're going to struggle. Which Jesus did. You know, so. So to take up your cross daily is it's a it's a badge of honor, yeah. but it's also it's a sentence as well. Yeah, he starts it off by saying he must deny himself and take up his cross. And probably should have said that before you answered, but you know that that to me is what Jesus did. He denied himself. He denied everything. He, he denied himself of heaven. He denied himself of closest with the Father and took up a cross for us. And so, yeah, when we get out of bed tomorrow and want yeah. to do things our way and for us, and, you know, Jesus didn't do that. You know, he didn't live the life of luxury. He, didn't, he wasn't a health and wealth guy. In fact, he promised that in this world you will have trouble, he said, um, but to take heart because he'd overcome the world, and he did that on a cross. And so, you know, here we are 2,000 years later, trying to figure out a way to every single day deny myself and do what's best for somebody else because mm -hmm. that's what Almighty yeah. Jesus did. What was best for someone else yeah. um, and how do we do that? Mm -hmm. And it starts to me, I believe, you got to be in prayer. God help me yeah. deny myself. I, I am not by nature a selfless person. Right, yeah, know? by nature we're selfish. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Or at least self-centered. Yeah. You know, I think I know you guys well enough that if I needed something you'd give me the clothes off your back. Well, stuff, whatever I needed, but self-centered, <laughs> you. you know, you, we're oftentimes, we think self first, and then, right. you yeah. know, the world, and Jesus exactly. was the exact opposite, so, what a role model, but he didn't ask us 
to do all the fun things only, yeah. he asks us to deny ourselves and take it across. That means die to yourself every single day. And, and with technology and stuff nowadays, it almost makes it easy for us to have things in preparation for things because we can have a Bible on our phone or mm -hmm. and so, you know, we don't have to necessarily carry one around. Yeah, I do that on purpose. Yeah. I carry mine on purpose around so well, that it draws I, questions. I am. I'm know. starting to now. <laughs> all right, bonus question. Uh-oh. What was your favorite Easter? Do you guys have a memorable favorite Easter in your in your past? And you guys online, I want to hear your favorite Easter too. Patty, I know you're listening. <laughs> yeah, there's not a, a specific Easter per se that stands out. Um, my grandmother, though, um, my grandmother went way overboard on everything she ever did. Um, so she made Easter very special for me. Um, but but beyond the the stuff, every every year. Uh, we would go to sunrise service mm -hmm. every year we would um and normally it was at the, the methodist church or whatever the, the it was down the street from her house it wasn't the church we went to it was the fact that her and i would go every sunday and and, uh, and that was she died when i was 16 so for 15 years that was our tradition so tr yeah tradition stirs up some memories doesn't it mm -hmm. yeah there's always some memories stirred up yeah, we'll talk about. yeah mine was when you know being younger my dad was an active minister and helping out with churches we would go we went to this one church that always we had the sunrise service going on and i loved it because it was out in the woods behind the church and they had three mounds set up with the crosses in them three crosses and the sun would rise behind those so they, cool. they cool. purposely positioned it that way and it was just it's awesome it's always in my memory yeah I, like you guys, I don't think there's a favorite one. I just Easter is my favorite holiday. It is what it is. I mean, that, if, without an Easter, none of the other things matter. Sure. Christmas doesn't even matter without yep. an Easter. We wouldn't be here, you know, celebrating a risen Savior, not just yep. one that went to the cross, which we studied last week. One that rose right. from the dead. There's an empty tomb. We serve a Savior that is not is not confined by death. He has Amen. conquered death, so that we never have to taste spiritual death. Yep. Yep. You know that old saying that uh, once born people die twice. Yeah. And twice born people die only once. And what he's talking about is being born again. Yeah. And so, hallelujah, we're going to celebrate that next week on Easter. Y'all know Easter's like in a couple days, right? Yeah. Five that's, days or something. That's crazy. Yeah. I get a three day weekend from work because of it. Oh. <laughs> good, good for you. I get to preach on Easter. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll be doing sound for you. <laughs> so, I, I love it. Wouldn't change anything I'm doing. I love Easter. I love to celebrate the fact that this is what life's all really about. I mean, I, I know that when you were kids, you probably had yeah. to. Easter baskets, and you had the visit from yeah. the Easter Bunny, and you had you know, a lot of the flair and stuff. Maybe not the the, the amount that Christmas puts mm -hmm. on, but there's always the stuff that Easter brings, you know, and yeah. even the traditions and the memories. Yeah. And I remember having uh, Easter sunrise services too, where we had pancakes, and the, yeah. the, yep. the church elders would make pancakes, and yep. we would have pancakes and all that. But really, it's about a risen Savior. Um, none of this would matter if we didn't have that. We would just be living through life and hoping to be good enough in the world's eyes until we die. You know, that, to me, that's no hope. And too sure. much of the world lives out there without hope. Uh, holding on to, to, to traditions. Let me try that with my real words. Holding on to <laughs> traditions and thinking services are good enough and, and I'll just go yeah. twice a year at Christmas yeah. and Easter. And, and to not have a relationship with Jesus is heartbreaking. Man. Gotta have that relationship. Yeah. So looking forward to doing Easter with you guys. Yes. 9 o'clock and 11 o'clock under the tent. Dale will close us with those times again probably. But just looking forward to seeing what God does on another beautiful day. If yeah. Jesus doesn't come back sooner, which we will certainly allow you to, Jesus, if you want to. Then cool. he came him. back on Easter. Like, that'd be kind of cool. Like, yeah. <laughs> that would be a, such a Jesus thing to do, wouldn't it? Yeah. Like, hey, <laughs> ah, come back. You know, I don't know. I'm yeah, ready. Sorry, my mind yeah, works. I'm too. ready. So, total off the wall thing. Uh oh. We know that. Christmas probably wasn't on Christmas Day. Yeah. Is Easter on Easter? I don't think it was either. I, mean, I, I haven't studied that in depth. In fact, I was just doing I've never some studies. About that till just now, and you know, very similar, I don't think it's the exact mountain, but you know, very similar area, Mount Moriah, where Abraham took Isaac mm -hmm. to sacrifice him, is probably traditionally very close, if not the mountain, Golgotha, yeah. where Jesus did sacrifice. And isn't it interesting that God provided a way out for Abraham to not have to go I through that story, man. That is a great story. But he didn't spare his own son. Yeah. Crazy, crazy yeah. analogy. So, yeah. anyway. Uh, we can go down rabbit trails for days on that topic. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Yes. If y'all have studied that, so I can't find anything that ties the two to the exact spot, but it's certainly very close, and I just would 
be curious to know if it was the spot yeah. and it's just, you know, you can't find I, it. I like his thing about what, what the time period of it. Was, when was that really? You know, was it, because, yeah. you know, we celebrated on the 25th of December, but that wasn't necessarily the date. And then That's Easter. a human tradition, because it's yeah. what, officially, you know, 100 days after Christmas yeah. or something, something like that. Yeah. Well, anyway, so anyway, we celebrate. Trip. Actually, guys, we celebrate Easter every day, yeah. and not just on Sundays. So. so, I hope you guys are enjoying this series that we've been in. Like Jesus is what the series is, where we talk about serving like Jesus, comforting like Jesus, uh, remaining in or remaining like Jesus, uh, pray like Jesus, pray. surrender like Jesus. Um, you know, we actually uh, end the series this coming Sunday on Easter, uh, risen like Jesus, and, and that's you know, Pat will get into that on Sunday. Uh, come and join us. Um, 9.30, no, 9, 9. and 11. Not, uh, stop laughing. There's no 30s this week. There's no 30s. No 30s. <laughs> um, 9 and 11. You can come at 9.30, but you'll miss some amazing worship or be really crazy early for the for, for lit. But, hey, if you want to come for both services. Whenever you shovel love on yourself. Yeah. yeah. Uh, might be limited. Limited. We don't know what to expect. We're, we're hoping for just, like, 400 people to come through. But who knows? That's up to you. Invite your friends. We, if you're coming to small group tonight, uh, we still have some of the flyers. I think I don't think they were all given out. Very few. Are uh, but take one, invite somebody. Uh, we will be a little bit later on this week putting uh, some welcome videos, uh, inviting people to come. There's on Facebook. There's already two events: one for the nine, one for the eleven. Uh, tag somebody in that. Share that. I know uh, Rachel, our social media coordinator, has been doing a great job getting out the Easter Love announcements. You, uh, Rachel, you are awesome. Keep it up. Um, but if you want to go find that post, and we can share that again, and we'll share that throughout the week. But feel free to invite people, tag people, um, bring out your friends. And again, we, we know there's going to be a large community of, of people just across the country that this is one of the two days a year they come to church. And, um, Hopefully cool. you invite them back. Yeah. By the way, Rachel does love when we talk about the fact that I start doing dishes around the house. Now. She loves me right now. <laughs> Cool. Um, we've been talking about this for a few weeks. We we are probably going to rename our show. Then again, who knows? We don't really script a whole lot around here except for, well, not really a whole lot. Yeah. Um, we, we are trying to avoid, and we're not these, like, gender whatever people, but kind of like to avoid the gender thing just because the ladies take over sometimes and, you know, the dogs come on the show. And, There's and not always knows? three of us, so... Sometimes yeah. there's four or two, or Dale's done in his backyard by himself. So yeah. even yeah. the amount of people is not necessary. So basically, whatever y'all want. And we've gotten some some crazy ones. We've gotten some cool ones. We've gotten a lot of them. Off yeah, the wall ones. keep them coming. Uh, throw them in the comments. Yes. Um, there's some other videos there. We'll go back through those, and in a few more weeks, we'll we'll pull out the list and and uh, we'll go through that, and then we'll, we'll I don't know. Whichever we'll we pick, Jeremy's gonna buy you lunch. Sweet. I but guess I should throw my name in there. No, you can't. You, you already said we can, and our families can't. Dang it. That's right. <laughs> I forgot about that. Um, small groups. Small groups is a huge part of our church. We talk about this a lot. They have blown up, like I said on Sunday. Uh, we have three groups meeting tonight, and then um, two daytime groups starting next week, and we'll throw more about that um, in the announcements. Uh, but tonight at the church, two men's groups at 630 and then a woman's group at 6.30, not at the church. Uh, if you go to our website, you can, on the our groups tab, you can find Stephanie Haas. You can find her information, her email. She's cool, her man. She's yeah. cool. Yeah, Pat's got a bias she's on that, biased, but she is yeah. a cool lady. Uh, she, she's one of my favorites. Um, one of my, never mind. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Rabbit cherry, I'll get it. <laughs> um, but find her information. Women, if, if you, ladies, yes. if you want to come to a small group tonight um she can get you hooked up with the with the top secret address and, and the times and all that um and then like i said starting next week 10 30 at the church on tuesday uh, my my wife will be leading another women's group and then friday tim hayworth will be leading one for the men at nine o'clock on friday morning for those of you that like to get up early Although that's not really early, is it? Nine o'clock for most people. That's early for me, but for most people, that's just two thirty this morning. I'm already at work for two hours by then. <laughs> anyway, um, I think that's really all I have. Again, feel free to, to share, to like, invite, keep commenting. If you, uh, we can pray for you. If you have prayer requests, you can put those here in the comments. You can go to our website, cfcc.church, in the connect with us tab, um, 
and put your information in there. Again, we just want to know who's who's hanging out, who's watching. Uh, we want to be able to connect with you. We want to be able to pray with you. So throw those prayer requests in there. And I think that is all I have. Outstanding. On the small groups, he skipped the youth on Wednesday nights. The oh, yeah, youngins. Hey, it's youths. right there. The <laughs> skipped over it. Wednesday, middle school, high school. Um, reach out to Jeremy. Yep. Uh, six thirty is still. At yeah, it's still six thirty. Right school. now, we're kind of. Cool. Working May, on maybe things, some changes. Yeah. I don't know. Who knows? Like I said, it's all in his planning, up. not ours. He yeah. said he wants to start having it at Disney World, so that's a thing. And maybe. Pat's buying. Oh. <laughs> 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 so the whole Disney thing not gonna. No, happen. not now. Uh, not with that. <laughs> too many mask deals anyway. Yeah. We could. Never mind. <laughs> Squirrel. <laughs> Hey, let's, let's uh, wrap this up to yeah. Pat, would you pray for yes, us this weekend? Yes, <laughs> Father, thank you so much for Easter and the time this time of year. Then let us never forget what it's really about. And uh, We still want to have fun. We still want to uh, get to know each other and maybe hold on, hold on to some traditions and uh, enjoy your beautiful scenery, God. But without a risen sun, without the, the Emmanuel, uh, God with us, none of it matters. And so we are so thankful that when... Jesus yelled those words, it is finished, that that curtain temple, that, that temple curtain ripped in half, and you invaded this place, and you now live inside of every Christ follower that has uh, surrendered to you. You now walk with us. God, you're like a, 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 you're like a mobile home. <laughs> you're on the move with us, and so thank you for that. And thank you for your, your presence in our lives, and, and I just ask you that um, you continue to mold us and shape us as we just humbly surrender to you to make us more like your son, uh, our perfect loving example. Thank you, Father, that you would send him in the, in the, to the cross in our place, uh, that we would never have to taste a second death. Thank you for your eternity. I don't know what it looks like yet, God, but I'm so excited to do it with you. It's in Christ's name I pray. Amen. 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 You guys out. Peace. Thanks for joining us.